so Howie Roseman is still sitting on a huge amount of salary cap. Most impactful free agents have been signed, although there's still one out there and Adam Schefter gives his take on it. Could we see a blockbuster draft day trade like we did in 2022? Plus, breaking as I was recording this, the Eagles bring back a veteran slot corner. I'm interested to hear y'all takes on it. We also hear from Zach McPherson, but more importantly, Cindy Brown. And of course, we got to start ramping up the draft talk. Hold up, though. Even more Eagles breaking news per Adam Schefter. Eagles and left tackle Jordan Malata reached an agreement on a three-year, $66 million extension that includes $48 million guaranteed and a $20 million signing bonus per sources. The deal ties Malata to Philadelphia through the 2028 season. The $2022 million per year average puts him behind only Larry Tunsil, Trent Williams, and Andrew Thomas amongst the NFL highest paid offensive tackles. Well deserved, big dog. I don't know where the cap is now. Forget what we kind of said in the middle of this video. It might not be a blockbuster trade coming up, but a trade still could be on the table. Now let's get to the original content. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Tall Podcast, and today we got a lot to get into. But before we do that, Eagle Nation, can I ask y'all for a quick favor? Help your boy out. Hit that like. Subscribe if you are new and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss the videos. So let's start today's video with the same question I asked to Twitter. How many sacks do you guys believe Bryce Huff will have in 2024? I need to hear those predictions. Remember, he led the NFL the last two seasons in pressure rate. Now, he only played 47% of the snaps, but that's still impressive, especially when you add 10 sacks while only playing 47% of the snaps. I think that's very impressive, and the Eagles didn't pay him $50 million to play 47% of the snaps. I think he's going to be playing 70 to 80%, and honestly, maybe more. However, I do believe the Eagles really want to have a true rotation, four solid pass rushers. Will we need the draft to do it, or could BG give us one more year like he did two years ago, playing the same 40-something percent of the snaps and getting double-digit sacks while Nolan Smith in year two? who was always called a mini Hassan Reddick step up big time. Again, a lot of people are down on Nolan, but the Eagles don't normally let the edge rushers come in and start right away. I do believe Nolan Smith has all the tools and the mindset to be a double-digit sack guy. Will that be in 2024? We're going to have to wait and see, but I've been a big believer in Nolan Smith, and I'm not off it. He ain't show me nothing wrong. He just didn't get the right amount of snaps. And Howie Roseman did say at the end of the season he regrets not playing Nolan Smith more. So we're going to see what happens there. However, we got some breaking news. As I was recording this, Adam Schefter tweeted, Eagles reach an agreement on a one-year deal with cornerback Avante Maddox per sources. Some Eagle fans ain't going to like it. And I know the injury history has been bad. I'm not here to say it hasn't. But besides last year, when he was healthy, he was productive. In the past, we were counting on him as a starter. With the way the roster looks, plus the draft ahead, he can just be a solid depth piece if needed. And I bet you it's a very cheap deal. Numbers haven't came out yet. It will come out soon enough. So when you put it all in perspective, I think it was a solid move by Howie Roseman. But best believe the Eagles are not done. Shout out to Jimmy Smith on the road to victory he got the exact numbers i forgot what they were but the eagles have over 30 million 31 and some change million in cap space you think we're just going to let it ride now the draftees might cost somewhere between four or five nine million i don't know we'll get to it when we get to it and a Devonte smith extension is expected by a lot of eagles beat writers and fans but remember as we talked about it in the past, a Devontae Smith extension doesn't affect the cap now. It does in the future, but we're not here to talk the future. We're here to talk now. So 30 to 31 plus million. Maybe Howie Roseman got a big trade and pay a guy up his sleeve. Whether that's in the secondary or on the D-line, I honestly expect a big time trade and sign similar to to the trade at the draft for A.J. Brown. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be that big or it has to be at the draft. It could be before. It could be at the draft, but it could be after. But 30 plus million? Yeah, how we keep some money on the side for a trade deadline acquisition if we need it. 
but that's still a lot of cap space. Because when I look at free agency, there's not many guys out there that the Eagles should and would spend money on, except one, Justin Simmons. And I feel like we talk about him all the time. 97 Fight the Fanatic asked Adam Schefter about it yesterday, and this was his exact words. I don't think they would based on the logic with Reddick, meaning why pay a 30-year-old when you didn't pay Reddick? although the money's big time different. But if Justin Simmons came in at a number, a price that was friendly, would they do that? Maybe, yeah, I'm making this up. But what if it's a one-year deal worth some friendly number? Would they do that? Because everybody's inquiring about Justin Simmons. Going into free agency, he was ranked 20th or 22nd as it pertains to the top 100 free agents. I'm talking all position. I think just safeties, he was ranked third or fourth. I don't understand why he's sitting on this shelf this long. That price tag must be too high. But like we always talk about, whether it's the Eagles or another team, the longer he sits, the more the price comes down. And if he sits past the draft, it's going to come down even more. So I'm very interested to see how all this plays out as it pertains to Justin Simmons. Now, before we get to some draft talk and two interesting top 30 visits, plus we get an update from Zach McPherson and Sidney Brown on their injury status, you gotta hear what Sidney Brown says. Let's hear a word from our sponsor. BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. Go check out BetUS. If you use the link in the description, you get 125% off your first three deposits. Let's take a look at some more futures because they're always adding. So, of course, they got draft stuff. They got player stuff. And now they got the team's things up here, and we can see what the over-under is for wins for the Eagles. Ten and a half. Of course, I already got it plus 110. I'm going to lock it in, put 50, put something on it. Even if the Eagles don't go to the Super Bowl, they not having under 10 and a half wins. Lock it in. Like I said, go check out BetUS. Let's get back to the content. So two days ago, I ran Pro Football Focus's mock draft simulator three to four times to see who kept popping up for the Eagles pick at 22. And these were the main guys, including Nate Wiggins, couldn't fit him on. So let me know what you think about him. But I asked y'all, who would you take if these were the guys on the board at 22? Out of 5K votes, 52% want Kool-Aid. Cooper Dijon came in second with 21%, as y'all can see. Jackson Power Johnson at 15%. He comes in third. And Leitu Latu comes in fourth with only 13%. I found it interesting that Leitu Latu was there at 22, but it must be because of the injury history because he can rush the passer. Thomas R. Peterson is reminding us yesterday that the Eagles have had top 30 visits with edge rusher Chop Robinson and Lie to lot to. Y'all know the Eagles top 30 is valued high. They can't draft all. Nobody can draft all their top 30 visits. However, Chop Robinson, I believe we have to trade up a little bit for him. But lot to might be there due to the injury history. And I'm going to need a clean bill of health from Howie Roseman, meaning he needs to go over it with a fine tooth comb. Remember, though, Landon Dickerson was injury prone in college. Bad injury history. We took a chance on him in the second round. He's been healthy, and now he's the best left guard in the NFL. We're going to need the same guys who looked at Landon Dickerson to look at Leitu's injury history with a fine-tooth comb. Let's be honest. How he can end up trading up, trading back, he plays shoots and ladders. And like I said early in this video, what if there's a big draft trade and sign? And we can't sleep on pick 50 and 53. These are guys we're going to count on as well. Moving on to Zach McPherson and Sidney Brown clearing up their injury status. I'll be ready for this upcoming season, so that's that's what I'm really excited about, being back on the field with the guys and this new year, this new team, so it's going to be a fun year to watch. I feel amazing. I mean, I, I, I can start working out for you right now if you really want me to. No, I, I feel great. Um, you know, they've been... I've been kind of in and out of Philly. I mean, I worked with a lot of the trainers in uh, back at my home school in Illinois, and uh, Jerome and Tom and the crew here has been working real hard with me. So I mean, it's been I'm I feel like I'm miles ahead of where I should really be, and um, I will be ready for when the season comes around. Looks like they're both be back. I don't know what role Zach McPherson will play for the Eagles, but I expect Cindy Brown to continue to grow. I love his tenacity on and off the field. Like, look, he could have just said 
he's coming back to start the next season, but he's he's willing to work out in front of the reporter. That's just the energy he has. It's not made up. It's not fake. He's just a guy who's always excited, always has energy, always wants to play football, and I respect it, and I love it. Lastly, I just want to wish Jalen Carter a happy 23rd birthday. Go live it up. Don't get too crazy, but I'm expecting a huge 2024 season. We got the right DC. We saw what he did early in the year. This guy is going to have a huge year, too. Soon, we're going to be talking about Jalen Carter with double-digit sacks from the D-tackle position, and we saw him already used differently last year. Inside, outside, full rush, speed rush. He could do it all. So enjoy your 23rd birthday, and I can't wait to see you suit up in 2024. With all that being said, I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Tall Podcast. Leave all your thoughts in the comment section, Eagle Nation. I love hearing from y'all. Drop the muscle emoji because we Philly strong. And don't forget to help your boy out by hitting that like button. Subscribe if you are new. And turn on that notification bell so you don't miss the videos. We out.